Finally doing something we should have done a long time ago. Y'all know by now the truck is a rusty boy. We're finally going to be taking care of it. Man, let me tell you, if I did this two, three years ago, we would be in a much better spot right now. But what we're going to be doing, we're taking care of the flaky rust under the truck. And then we're putting on a little bit of a undercoating right here. And I'm telling you, man, if you guys are always taking your truck to the beach or off the beaten path to get down to the water, you might want to look into doing something so you don't end up in a situation like me. Dumb as hell. Basically what we're doing, we're removing any flaky rust before we do apply that coating because if the flaky rust does fall off, then it doesn't have any coating on it. If you dealt with rust before, you know you really can't get rid of it. All you can do is try your best to slow it down. And that's what that undercoating is going to do. It's just going to stop air and water from getting to the metal. And honestly, I haven't really been fishing that much, which is really sad. The good news. We're going out tomorrow with my dad. And I've got a sick recipe to cook up some fish. Hopefully, maybe some trout, maybe some redfish. Woo, we're getting out there, man, and it is early. Pretty much every day for the last several months, it's been over 90 degree weather. Since it has been so hot, it's just even more reason to get out early as possible. We're in kind of a typical summer pattern where it's lower winds in the morning, not too windy, but as the day goes on, the wind picks up more and more. It's gonna be hot, but luckily, we're gonna be hopping in the water to do a little bit of wade fishing. Well, life is too short, so love the one you got, cause you might get right over all your back get. Starting off with the top water, my go-to man. If I want to use top water and I want to do my best to get bites, I'm going with the bone, Super Spook Junior. One of my favorite search baits with these smaller top waters, you can work them pretty dang fast and they'll still get hit. When you use the bigger top waters, you do want to slow them down quite a bit. Oh, I got a bird. He got it right through the nares. Is that what you wanted, fella? Oh, Decent strike right there. Nice on the top one. All around these birds, see, man, we just, hopefully it's not a dink or red. Nah, it's a little trout. Just hooked a little weird. And he spit it. Damn it. Fishing right off the shore here. It has uh, some nice grass mixed in with some potholes as well. Tide's super low right now, but even here I'm at a really, kind of a, a little bit deeper depth than I thought it was gonna be, which is actually good. <laughs> okay, bro. Holy, what a catch. Freaking yanked him out of half a foot of water. There's nothing he could do about that. He, came for, he went for it twice, dude. Man, what a crazy guy. Still, not a keeper, though. Oh, there's a red on it. Damn, and he didn't get it. Super shallow red, interesting. We might have spooked another one too. But he got it. There he got it. This might be a trout actually. It's a trout. And there's another one following it. A couple more. Little red, little red, dude. There's a couple more on it. I thought it was a trout just because of size. Woohoo! Definitely not a keeper though, but. These reds are up here. <laughs> Even this little one is up here super shallow. Finally got to keep something on the topwater lure at least. It doesn't even have a blue tail. Just a little, just barely a little bit. Let him go. Is there a fish on or there is oh that's a better one wow that's a lot better one let's go he had it on the whole time damn that's not a bad fish right there damn finally dude oh that's a nice fish boys i think that might be a decent fish nothing super crazy but i just caught a little tiny dinker did not expect to hook up to a nice one i don't know how well he's hooked either 
just because. I, he he kind of ate it up and it ran at me like a redfish. I, I did not even believe I had a fish on until I felt absolutely nothing. He kind of got it deep too. Woohoo! He was shaking his head too. I mean, they love to do that when they do get it hooked a little bit deeper. That's not a bad fish right there. Don't shake it right now, fella. Don't shake it. Bang! Let's go! Decent one! Let's go, boys. Dang, came out nice. Dude, I, I was starting to move really fast just because we did catch a super tiny dink. I was fishing kind of the same area, and then this better one hits it. What are you guys putting that guy at? That's a nice, that's a decent little fish. I'll go 20. Damn, 21 incher. Woohoo! It's a little bit slow, man, right now. A little bit slow. There might be more fish right here, but this fella is gonna go on the stringer. That's about my cutoff right there, about 21 inches. Once they get to about 22, I, I never really keep them. But I will keep a nice 21 incher, especially because he did get it a little bit deep. He was bleeding just a little bit. That's exactly what I needed, fellas, because it's been a couple hours, maybe two hours, but not really getting too many bites. Well, it is just a 20.5 incher, but man, I'm pretty hyped about it because during summer, it can be a little bit of a grind. The morning, man, it started off really slow. Just a couple small fish. <clears throat> That's a fish. Golly. Same thing, man. They're just, they're not really fighting for it. <laughs> With this guy, you can see why. Well, let's tie this guy up right here as we're getting ready to move to the next spot. The next spot is going to be... A little bit of a deeper flat, which is nice for a little bit later in the day. Those fish are gonna be com comfortable coming up there. Hey, look, a freaking shark! There's a guy. Oh, that's a gooder. That's a gooder one. Man. Boys, I've been, if I'm not mistaken, I think I've spooked like two giant fish. <laughs> and I thought they were trout, but then again, right here we have a red fish, so who knows. Tiny red, huh? I was just walking through this turtle grass, and then all of a sudden, 10, 15 feet in front of me would be a giant fish. I'm thinking they're speckled trout. There he is. Ooh, that's a better one. That is a better fish, dude. Actually, though. His mouth is looking giant when he shakes his head like that. Am I crazy? Look at him, he's just running towards us now. Dang! This is a nice one I think. Dang, dude. Oh my gosh. That's a decent freaking fish right there. You're done, buddy. You're done. Look at that. The head shakes are sick though. is in the top of his mouth, just barely in that area. But we got him sunk in there, boys. Let's go, decent one. 22, about one inch, just about one inch bigger. That's a nice fish, boys. Look at that, and it just fell out. Dude, I was right about to switch to the top water, which I still might do, but the wedger is doing us good right now with that nice one. There he is. Ah, oh, dinker. Fellas, we got our fish cleaned up, and I told you we're gonna be cooking something a little bit special with that fish. Habanero, obviously. It, habanero is kind of the disappointment of this dish, actually. And let me tell you why. A long time ago, I was lucky enough to go on vacation in Jamaica. And in Jamaica, I found one of my new favorite foods, jerk chicken, jerk shrimp, jerk fish, anything with jerk seasoning on it. And that's why this guy is a little bit of a disappointment, the habanero. In real jerk seasoning, you'll be using scotch bonnet peppers, but at least these have similar capsaicin values. So yeah. We're gonna be cooking up some jerk speckled trout. So we're just gonna be roughly chopping up everything for our marinade and throwing it in the food processor. Got about three quarters of a white onion, three habaneros, our green onions, and then we have about seven cloves of garlic. 10 to 15 sprigs of fresh thyme, about four slices of ginger. Then we have our seasonings, one tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of my man, cayenne, one tablespoon of allspice, and then about three tablespoons of brown sugar. And they're all going in. 
Then we have the juice of one large onion. Going straight in. Can't forget our boys too. We got the juice from two limes going in. And to finish it off here, we got our liquids. We're going with some soy sauce just to give us our salt and then a little bit of rice vinegar as well. And last but not least, we got our olive oil before we start processing our marinade. Now, we did make a little bit extra, and what I'm thinking is, we did catch some speckled trout, which is what we're gonna cook up, but I'm thinking, man, this might be actually incredible on some redfish. Redfish on the half shell with this stuff on top, I think it might, it might go a little bit crazy, and we'll be able to keep this in the fridge for at least five days. Maybe we'll be able to catch a redfish in the next five days. But for now, we cook up the speckled trout. Now there's nothing to it. We got our beautiful speckled trout filet, and all we gotta do is baste this on there and throw it on the pan with a little bit of oil. It smells quite good. One thing you cannot beat about cooking up some fish filets is they cook up super quick and super easy. Now the reason I love eating all those jerk foods is I love heat. And this combines heat with a little bit of sugar as well. <laughs> a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweet. Let's see if we got it right ourselves. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I was a little bit worried those habaneros weren't going to do it justice, but it's pretty damn good, man. Well, I hate to say the same thing every time, but man, it was actually better than expected. For me, the amount of heat actually ended up perfect with three habaneros and that cayenne as well. And of course, I love you guys very much. Talk to you guys next time.